Hey guys, welcome back to Rhino Off Road, and today um, we are doing a little bit of a follow up. Um, my last video was a full valve adjustment on the Kilosaki. It went well. Uh, compression's great. I messed up a little bit, but I fixed it with the uh, valves and uh, I pulled the plugs to change them. Uh, they were a little bit light for my liking. Ooh, that one's a little lean. Now, if you don't know, um, light plugs is bad. It's very, very bad. Um, without getting too technical about it, you're not getting enough fuel and it's burning real hot and you could burn down this engine, like melt pistons. Um, light plugs is not good, but um, mine wasn't that light that it freaked me out. They were light enough that I want to try to prevent anything from going on. So what I did was I ordered fuel pump upgrade from Full Access UTV. Now, I've used these guys quite a bit. As you can tell, there's a lot of their stickers on my machine. Um, great products, you know, so... Uh, Nice thing with this pump, lifetime warranty. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty cool. So to me, that says they have confidence in this pump. So it's an ounce of prevention today. Um, it might not be necessary, but I'm not willing to bet my engine on it. So today uh, we're gonna put the new pump in. It's not that bad. I have to put a disclaimer here, we are working with gasoline. Now, this video is not a guide. You have to do things how you see fit and safe. Um, fumes ignite, that's, that's a fact of life. Like, you can ignite fuel from way far away. So, uh, you have to practice your own safety. I can't be responsible for that. But that being said, if you're not comfortable doing it, take it in. But uh, I'm going to get uh, things prepped here. We need some airflow in here. Unhook the battery, all that stuff. But um, it shouldn't be a bad job. And if it prevents my engine from going boom, it's well worth it. So let's uh, get some prep done here and let's get after it. Okay guys, we're ready to get started here. I have the uh, I have the garage door open at the top and bottom. It's still cold out, it's like two degrees. So this could be a chilly job, but okay, we have the fan in the window. Wow, that looks like it's going really slow, but it's not. Um, the heater is off. That's a potential ignition spot. And uh, the secret is to keep the air moving. Get it out of here. You do not want uh, fumes building up. So, in the garage door, out there. Works for me, you do what you think is best. Now, right off the bat, in here is your battery. Grab this tab, pull. There is your negative. You need your 10 mil. Let's, uh, wrong way. Let's get rid of that. And, uh, make sure absolutely no sparkage is going to happen. You don't want any sort of, uh, source of ignition here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you guys down so I can do this with two hands. But, uh, 
unhook your battery first. Very important. All right, I will be back. All right, guys. So this is what has to go down here. I have, uh, it's going to be easier for me. Maybe you have the stock set up. You're going to have to unbolt the seat. I have the full access tilting seat and I've installed click six. So it might be a little different from you. Uh, you'll figure it out. So for now, let's uh, show you how to get rid of this click six. Up here, just get them out of the loops, undo them. So get them out of the way. And my seat comes up like so. I have gear bags on the back too, extra storage, awesome idea. Now, I just have pins down here to pull and the entire seat comes out. So, let's uh, get rid of them. There we go. And out comes the seat. It's just that easy. I like this kit. Now, toolbox. Just trying to get things out of the way. Now, what we're after is under here. And it's not that hard to get to. We have our push pins to get rid of, a couple bolts, this comes off, there's your fuel pump. So let's get some tools. All right, we are back and we've got our six mil hex, 17 mil, can't tell that's wore off, but uh, that's 17 mil for our support here. And like I said, if you got uh, the stock set up, it's probably gonna be different. I can't remember what the stock bolts are. <clears throat> now let's get rid of this guy. Keep the hardware safe. Now, once again, my handy dandy push pin pullers. I put uh, I put it in the description of the last video and it'll be on this one too. Amazon, I believe, is where I got them. And just like that, there's your lovely fuel pump covered in mud. So, obviously, we're going to clean that up. I will be back in a second. Alright, we're back, guys. And what I have is a toothbrush. Probably not one you use. If you can get a hold of your buddies, that'd be good. But uh, we're going to use that to break all this crap up. Obviously, I've done a little bit of mudding. Now, we're gonna break up as much as we can here. Don't rip these, don't rip these things out. 
Just smash it up. It should be not too bad. This nice Canadian mud smashes the pieces pretty good. All right, first step. I'm gonna go get the vacuum. Okay, let's get rid of the majority of this. not bad now as you might have guessed we want uh, pretty much no dirt anywhere so I forget how these come off one second okay we are back and uh, let's see this guy here on this back side there's a tab push it in wiggle it it'll come out now we want to tuck him way way away where's he gonna go we can stick him under these plastics i think yeah i'm gonna get a zip tie and go through here to keep that out of the way 100 percent and probably the same over here you do not want crap falling in there so, a couple zip ties it is. Okay. Best weapon in your toolbox right there. Let's put this guy through. Just to hold him out of the way. Now, I have my air compressor here. Be dusty, but uh, we need this to be clean. Okay, now before we take the uh, the fuel line off, I have a jug of soapy water, and we are gonna hose this down the whole area. And any extra crap in here has got to go. All around this lid. All this stuff. Just to stop anything from going in there. There. Now makes a bit of a mess but uh this is where the air compressor comes in Pretty clean. Now we got to get this guy off and it's uh maybe I should move you guys down a bit if I can. These things are a little tricky. Let's see if you guys
guys will sit there maybe. They're a weird little bracket. It's almost like a bread clip, I think, but uh, hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing here. If you can get them that far, take your little flat blade screwdriver and slide it that way. Yeah. Well, I might be able to zoom in. I'm seeing what the camera sees. I'll zoom that in as much as I can. So, just give that a couple wiggles. Nicely, don't break that. Nice and gentle. There. You're gonna have a little bit of fuel coming out. So this is where things start to stink. Let's get our zip tie. Keep this guy out of the way. There. Beautiful. So, we are uh, we're just about ready to undo our caps here. Everything's out of the way. So, we'll grab... Uh, we're going to need wrenches for these two unless you have really really small sockets I'll see what I have I might but you got to get under this lip so I will go get some wrenches and I'll be right back well what do you know I did find my very very teeny tiny uh, 8 mil so that's what we're gonna do get rid of all these I'm not gonna make you watch me unscrew all these but I'll be back when I take the last one out and we'll get this retainer ring off and I'll show you what's going on in there. And we are back. I forgot to mention that uh, I ripped a piece. Well, this is a beer box, honestly. I ripped a piece out of a beer box and I'm going to set that over top of there when I get the pump out. Just lay a wrench across it or something. It cuts down on the vapors escaping. But we have uh, all of our bolts out. Now I should mention there is see that tab? This outer ring only fits on here one way where that tab is. Okay so when you're putting it back together remember that and it's not hard to remember which way this goes because it points right at the uh, fuel hose and these bolts won't line up to get that in there right. Or you could just watch the video. Hey, it goes that way, right? So, let's, uh, um, let's get you guys down here. Now, there's all kinds of fun stuff hanging off this thing. You got, uh, you got the float for your uh, fuel gauge, and I just dumped a pile of fuel. Oh yeah, that's awesome. There's a pile of fuel now. So we are uh, we're gonna get this to my bucket outside and let it drain off. Then we're gonna let this all evaporate and then cover this up. I told you this is going to be messy. And here we are on our nice clean surface. So, the filter's in here. we got to get this off. There's a tab right here. you got to squeeze these together. And then the foot comes off.
there. It comes out a little violently, but it comes out. Well, that is 4,000 kilometers on my fuel filter. There's some crap on there. It's not actually horrible. There's uh, just normal sediment. But definitely time to replace this. Okay, so we've got our foot off. Not really much junk in there, so that's good. Now, this guy here is going to be fun. There's all kinds of these little tabs here that you have to get around all at the same time to wiggle this off. I guess we should uh, unplug these first, like so. So this, 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 that. That's all got to come off so we can take that that way. So I'm going to get my super skinny little screwdriver. Try to be careful with this stuff. Get this guy started. And this guy. It's not bad if you can gently, like, uh, wiggle it. Kind of walk it out every time you get to one of these. Right, that's, if you can get that tab past there, that's, uh, that's the key. I hope you guys are, uh, let's see what you're seeing. Not bad. There. Just like so. No crap in there, that's good. So, here is your fuel pump. Let's get this happy little guy out of here. There he is. So, that smacks back down in there. And, uh, I don't think we're going to save this guy. If you go to save these, you have to fill these immediately with something. Some kind of, I don't know, lube, penetrating fluid, something. Because as soon as these seals dry out, they're done. And they dry out quick, because gas evaporates. Yeah, I don't think we're going to save this guy. So, let's uh, let's go get our new one and I will be right back. Well, here we are. We've got our new filter. Got our new pump. Now, Keep these guys the same way. Black over here. And blue on the left. Sorry, I forgot the camera was there. There we go. All right. So we're just going to give a little visual. No crap in there. 
plugs aren't corroded. No crap down inside. All right. Okay, now what we want to do is take your cap off. There. Take this little O-ring. Get him on there. Take your other cap off. Get it in there. Now, this guy, the wires go to the top. This guy tucks in there like so. The O-ring's nice and tight, so that's good. So we're going to leave that guy like that. Now, get our wires coming out here. And just snap it in. That's all there is to it. These guys go back in like so, and we're getting there. Now, our new filter. See, it's got uh, two little guides there. It goes like so. Make sure he's on there nice and snug. goes inside the foot I think I went and got that yep I got that backwards never mind like this pull your filter off There we go. Now, put it this way. Nice and tight. Then, put your foot on. Snap it in. And you are done. Now, one more thing I was going to mention is uh, this is your fuel float. This tells you how much fuel you have because this thing floats. Kawasaki left a big gap under here. I don't know why, but um, a lot of guys, they bend this rod out to the side out here. The float still ends up in the same spot, but it's actually flush with the table here. It gives you a more true reading of where your gas is. I haven't done that because I kind of like the idea that, you know, if I think it's empty, I still have plenty of fuel to get where I'm going to get some fuel. I don't know, just me, but uh, yeah, you can bend it out, put it right down, then you're getting a more true reading in your tank. Up to you. But for now, let's uh, get this back in the machine. Now, we are back at the tank. I set the uh, soapy water up on there. Let's get rid of this guy. Now there is a little residue around the inside where the ring was. I'm just gonna nicely, nicely wipe that up. Right, let's get that ring out of the way. I'll kind of wipe this out away from the opening. There. Much better. All right. Now, 
we will uh, wipe our ring off. Okay, now we're just gonna wipe out this track just in case there's any residue in there. Make sure it's perfectly clean. That looks good. Because if you swamp this thing, and I've had it this deep in water, water is going to go right into your tank if this isn't absolutely water tight. So, get our ring sitting in there. Now, it's going to be a kind of a goofy fit. It's really tight in there. So you're going to have to mess with it until it sits down there. Now, our pump. This takes a little bit of shenanigans to get it in there right. Down past this lip. Just like so. Now, we remember, there we go. This will only go one way. Like so. I guess I forgot to tell you. There's also a nub, a black one on this side, on the outside. And you have to line it up with this one on the inside. There, that one's lined up. That one's lined up. The holes are lined up. All right, let's get our bolts and get those in there. Okay, we've got our bolts in here. And we're just going to lightly, lightly snug these. Now remember, this is just going into a metal nut that is sitting in plastic. So you don't want to horse these things. Let's get these guys underneath. Just so it's lightly, lightly seated. There. Now we're going to go across and just snug. This guy here. Fantastic. I don't know what a tank's worth, but I'm pretty sure you don't want to buy one. Do not strip those out. Okay, we've got our handy snips here. So this guy goes back on. Give it the wiggle. Um, let's move you guys in. So make sure it's seated. Snap that back. Make sure it's locked. Good. This guy here, there's your tab. Make sure it snaps. Nice and tight. And there we have it. The only thing left is to now cycle it and listen. Oh, never mind. Now, get your battery back on, 
clean this up. Clean that up. I got one of these brass brush. Get this guy on there. Just snug again. Because you will bend these ears and they will break. There. Put your cover back on. Snap it into place. Now, the test. Turn it on, listen for it to cycle, and build pressure and stop. And here we go. That took way longer than usual because it's empty. But that's awesome, it stopped. Let's kill it. Now it again. There we go. And that's all there is to it, guys. It's uh, it's not that bad of a job. You know, um, to, to have that peace of mind that you know you're making good fuel pressure now, you're not slowly melting your engine down, yeah, that's worth it, totally. So uh, if you got any question of whether your pump's any good or not, just replace it. Why would you gamble, you know? But uh, yeah, it's it's simple. You can do it. Even with filming, it took me two hours, not that much. So um, give full access a look if you need lifetime warranty pump. Um, for now, that's it, but uh, there is more coming. I got clutching to do, I have driveline to do, and a couple other little goodies. We're gonna make Kilsaki absolutely bomb proof. But uh, for now, hit that subscribe. I hope the video helped somebody anyway, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.